In this lesson, guys, we were talking about the emission spectrum. So we'll be understanding what is absorption, what is emission, what is light, and reading these silly little spectrum charts. So first off, absorption. Like the word absorb, the electron is going to be absorbing energy from either fire, electricity, some sort of heat, even a chemical reaction. And that causes it to move up an excited state configuration. Don't forget, excited states, they're temporary and they're extremely unstable. So emission, to emit, to release, negative electrons are attracted to positive nucleus. So they're going to eventually return back to their ground states and release energy and return there. Hmm. So light, or the color of light, is determined by the amount of energy released when the electrons are returning to the ground state. And therefore, every element has its own unique light that it gives off because every element has unique amounts of electrons. Oh. So different lights that you see, like very bright white lights or yellow lights or neon signs or anything that gives off a light that doesn't have a filter in front of it, you can tell what element it is based off the color of light. So now we get these bright line spectrums. Now this is a very unique like uh, light fingerprint for each and every element. Um, and we use it to identify unknown mixtures of gases. For example, the stars, this is how astronomers are going to determine what elements make up a star that is billions of miles away from us. So they identify their bright line spectrums, identifying the elements because it is unique. And based off the element, they could also determine what stage of the star's life is in. If it's a new star, a dwarf, or something very close to a supernova. So reading a bright line spectrum, this is an actual regions question that you will probably see on your test. All that you have to do is just match up the lines that seem to be mixing with our mixture. So you're noticing you have a bright line spectrum for lithium, cadmium, and strontium. So look at your mixture on the very bottom and see which lines from lithium, cadmium, strontium match. Remember, they are fingerprints for that element. They need to match exactly as they are shown in the lithium, cadmium, and strontium and they can't have missing ones. No partial line spectrums. So pause the video and try to identify which elements or element makes up this mixture. So when you look at it, it's kind of simple. All you have to do is match them up. And you're noticing that we have a lot of hits on the lithium and strontium. With the cadmium, yes, we do have two spots in blue that are popping up but they themselves are not enough, as Mr. Dimitopoulos said, not enough to clarify or to say that this mixture has cadmium. Because in reality, it also, you know, that first box right here is also the same line that that lithium's on. And this box over here is the same line that that strontium has. So this is the electromagnetic scale. You'll notice that visible light happens to be on this scale with radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And you'll also notice that the red visible light that we see in like a rainbow um, has a very large wavelength, yes. And the blue or the violets are going to have a very low wavelength. So they don't, they bend more than the red does. For countless generations, humans have felt the sun's warmth and watched it rise and set. Some societies have literally worshipped it. And yet, until quite recently, the sun was a mystery. No one really knew where it came from, what it was made of, or why it gave off light at all. Today, the situation is different. Because we've learned to read something called the electromagnetic spectrum, we know a lot about the sun and are learning more every day. Here's how it works. Like most stars, our sun is basically a big nuclear furnace. Deep inside its core, immense gravitational pressure fuses hydrogen into helium. These reactions release a tremendous amount of energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Because our sun is huge and dense, the particles that carry this energy, called photons, can take thousands of years to reach the surface. 
but once they break free, it's about an eight and a half minute journey to Earth. The photons that carry energy from the sun travel in the form of waves. Alternating electric and magnetic fields push each other forward at the constant speed of light. But even though they travel at the same speed, not all photons pack the same punch. Those that carry more energy oscillate more quickly with a shorter distance between the crest of each wave. This distance between one crest and another is known as the light's wavelength, and the shorter it is, the more energy the light carries. Together, the entire range of possible wavelengths is known as the electromagnetic spectrum. Every second, the sun emits light across different parts of the spectrum, from low energy radio waves and microwaves to high energy x-rays and gamma rays. The problem is, our eyes are tuned only to a narrow sliver in the middle, the so-called visible light range. In the early 1600s, scientists first learned how to magnify this light from the skies with glass lenses. Continued improvements helped astronomers see the sun's surface in more detail. But no matter how large the telescope, there's only so much we can learn from looking at visible light. The real revolution in astronomy has come with our ability in recent decades to see a much wider range of wavelengths. Additional layers of the sun, which burn at much higher temperatures, became visible. And ever since, the dynamic life of our sun, and all stars, has been coming into focus. So we use these spectrums to, like, see the aurora borealis. Like, the picture in the top left is actually an image from the ISS, or the International Space Station. They're actually picking up the excited electrons of different gases over the North Pole. Now, when you go see fireworks, for example, and as they're exploding, those different colors are the excited electrons of various different metals that are inside the shots of the fireworks. You'll also, if you've ever bought color flame candles, they have in the wick of the candle, they have a specific element that actually will glow the color of the candle. If you've ever wondered why fire is always orange, it's because it's burning carbon. And carbon, all organic life, burns orange because carbon's light that it gives off is an orange color. 